to overcome evil altars. You see, all through the pages of the Bible, we are going to be praying very shortly, but I want us to, because we are bringing waging war against this evil altar to an end now, then from Monday we are going to continue on another different I mean, uh, dimension or different series. But I want you to understand that for you to overcome this wicked, this demonic, satanic altars permanently, to keep them under check in your life, that is one of the secrets I want to share with you before we start praying. All through the pages in the Bible, you realize that almost every great man had to raise an altar unto the Lord. They had to raise an altar. And I told you before, when you raise an altar unto God, even when you are sleeping, your altar will still be fighting on your behalf when you are sleeping. That's one of the benefits of raising altars. You know, when you raise an altar, even when you are not too strong, even when you are sleeping, or sometimes you don't even feel strong by yourself, the altar will wake, the altar will raise up for you. The altar will rise up on your behalf and fight your battles for you. Altars will also fight on behalf of your little kids. Even those ones that don't know left from right, those ones don't even know how to pray on their own. Because you've raised an altar in your family, you've raised an altar in your own particular family. That altar will begin to fight on behalf of your family and will also fight for your children, fight for you at your point of weakness. Maybe when you are very strong or you don't have the same stamina or energy to pray like other times, the altar will definitely stand and help you out. That's one of the benefits of raising altars. You see, the enemy, they are good at raising altars because they know altar is just their source and the backup for all their demonic activities. You see in Numbers 22, Numbers 23, other places, Act of Apostles, chapter 22 from verse 13, you see it there. You see in Second King chapter 6, you see it verse 26, verse 23 down to 26. You could see where this man raised altar, the king of Moab raised altar in Second Kings, uh, Second Kings chapter three, there about from verse twenty-three to twenty-six, raised an altar. Act of Apostles twenty-two from verse thirteen, you could see where the men bounded themselves with an oath, and they said they will never eat nor drink until they kill was an altar raised there. And you see in different places the enemy would always raise an altar. Then also in the Bible, you see Abraham raised an altar, Isaac raised an altar, Jacob raised an altar, altars everywhere, because it became battles of the altars, altar versus altars. And it's very important for you to raise an altar. Just like as you are praying with us now, I know that there's a particular place in your house or a particular place in your room where you always, probably it could be your bed position that you are always lying or sitting down or probably one of your chairs, I mean the chairs in your room, that's where you sit down to pray with us. Know definitely that wherever you have been staying regularly, consistently for several months that you join this prayer, you have already raised an altar there. You have raised an altar in your house. You have raised an altar in your bedroom. It could be your sitting room. You have raised an altar. So don't joke with that position. Already an altar is raised. And I want to tell you that you don't need any special I mean, sacrifice or you don't need any special uh, whatever preparations to raise an altar. It's just for you to wake up and every day choose a particular place where you go for prayers. And that's why you see us come to this place every morning. Altar has been raised. And I told you one of the benefits. Please listen to this. This will help you a lot. Not just pray, 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 pray. This will help you a lot. We are going to be praying after this. Listen to me. One good thing about raising altar is because the altar you are raising will definitely give access to angelic transactions, the angelic activities, and that will become constant in your house. That is why it is better to raise altar in your house than to go to your neighbor's house and you are praying in your neighbor's house. Because when you go to pray with your neighbor in their house, all the time you are raising altars in your neighbor's house. 
and that altar, by the time you finish your prayer meeting and you leave or close, you discover that that altar will still be working because the angels will still be on the altar carrying out activities. But unfortunately, the activities are no longer in your house. You raise the altar in your neighbor's house. And that's why I told you that most of the praying mountains you go. And why sometimes you find out that you have good experience, better experience, and quick answer prayers on mountains is because altar has been raised there before you got there. Altar has been in existence. Angels have been ascending and descending, ascending and descending. And probably that heaven has been blast open. And that's why you go there to pray and you receive answers. So I advise that you raise altar in your home where you provoke angelic assistance, angelic activities, angelic transactions on behalf and on behalf of your family. Then a time comes that the heaven will be widely open. That whoever comes to your house, receive healing. Whoever comes to your house, receive deliverance. Where's the back of your house and counter breakthrough? Why? Because the heaven over your home is open and angelic assistance and angelic visitation, angelic encounters are everywhere on that altar. So that's one of the benefits. So as you wake up to join us every morning, you've raised an altar. You've raised an altar. Sometimes if you are not home and your children tell you, Mommy, I'm not feeling good, I'm feeling sick, tell them to go to that portion of your house and just sit down. You discover that angels will visit them. Just tell them to go to that particular place. You always stay to pray, which is already your altar position. Tell your children to go there, lie down, or probably sit down there. You discover that the angelic assistance or the power of God will hit them, and they will definitely get deliverance and get healed. Now, I want to tell you one of the most powerful ways to overcome evil altars. We've been praying against that, and we have overpowered them. But to keep them permanently defeated is for you to raise your own altar. To raise your own altar. And the raising of your own altar, all it involves, all it entails, all it requires, all it requires, is for you to have a vibrant prayer order, a vibrant prayer life on that altar. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 6, let's look at verse 12 and 13. Leviticus 6. 12 and verse 13. Very interesting. Leviticus 6, 12 and verse 13. Let's quickly look at that. We're going to be praying very shortly, but it's very good we go through this. Leviticus 6, 12. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning on it. It shall not be put out. That means the fire on your altar shouldn't go out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning. Listen to me. I don't know how many times you pray in a day. I don't know when you pray in a day. But one of the most powerful moments to pray in a day is early hours of the morning. Is this particular time. Don't joke with early morning prayer. Very important. Very, very important. I told you before, that was several months ago when we started, that 4.30 to 5.30, is the time that has the thinnest demarcation, the thinnest veil, thinnest, thinnest. That means very thin. That means the gap between the spiritual and the physical is at the thinnest point, thinnest point, very thin, very thin, very thin. At that point is the thinnest point that has the veil between the spiritual and the physical. So 4.30 to 5.30. After that, the gap and the thickness between them start widening up. But the thinnest spiritual and physical come is this moment, is this thinnest point. So that is why you must learn to wake up by this hour of the morning to cry. At this time, your angelic guides are closest to you. Your ministry spirits are closest to you. It's like you are just a thin line, just like the thinnest line between the spiritual and the physical. That is, if you just take a step now, you might be in the spiritual realm. So that's why it's always good. You see, this is the particular time where Jesus would always wake up to go for prayers, early hours of the morning, by 4, 4, 35, 4, 4, 4, 35. 
That is the right time. And I told you, this time is the time where you encounter the best of divine visitations. Early hours of the morning. Don't joke with it. Early hours. Do everything to force yourself up. Do everything to pattern your prayer altar to this time. And you'll discover that you will begin to have different kind of encounter. You begin to have different kind of visitation. So please learn to wake up early. You can pray other times during the day, and which we all do. But this time should be a time of heavy concentration for you, heavy prayer time for you, early hours in the morning. Devote. And please, I want you to pray sufficiently at this time. Pray sufficiently. In Jude chapter 1, Jude has only one chapter. While reading verse 20, Jude chapter 1 and verse 20. Let's look at that. Jude chapter 1 and verse 20. I'm teaching you on how, I'm sharing with you on how to keep the evil altars under check by raising your own godly altars. Now, but ye below, building up yourself on your most holy feet. Praying in the Holy Ghost. One of the best ways to ignite your prayer altar is when you pray sufficiently for a long time in the Holy Spirit. Always pray, praying in tongues. Always praying in tongues. You pray in tongues for one hour. You pray in tongues for two hours. You pray in tongues for three hours. You can pray in tongues for five hours. You can sometimes do what you call contact prayers. You pray for five hours, rest for two hours, pray for five hours, or you can do a total of contact eight for just at a stretch. That means you pray for eight hours non-stop. When you begin to do this, you begin to see high level of encounter because the more you pray in tongues, the more you penetrate, the more you penetrate in the realm of the spirit, the more you draw closer to the throne of grace, the more you tap into the power within the supernatural. So you must learn to pray. Then you must also learn to do what we call be a, I mean, learn to worship God. Learn to worship God. This is very important. I want us, I mean, I mean, learn to worship God. How do I put it now before we start praying? The worship I'm talking about is, now let me just make it, I mean, a clear demarcation. Let me make clear differentiation between these two. When I say learn to worship or worship God all the time. I'm not talking about singing songs, you know. That's not what I mean because a lot of people today, they, they see it as, you know, sometimes with, uh, when people are singing songs, they say they are worshiping God or when they are singing songs, they say they are worshipers. No. When we talk about worship, worship is not singing song. Singing song is different from worship. You need to understand that. Singing song is different from worship. What we have these days is people singing and doing entertainment stuff, but that is not worship, you know. If you worshiping God is different from singing songs. I want us to look at Genesis quickly. Genesis, let's look at Genesis before I explain further, and I will tell you what worship is all about. Worship is not singing songs, and uh, singing song is not worship. No, 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 no. When you are singing song, that's the difference, you know, you are doing entertainment stuff. That's a different thing, but let's look at Genesis 4. Genesis 22, let's read verse 5 very quickly. Genesis 22 and verse 5. Genesis 22 and verse 5. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the Lord will go yonder and worship and come again to you. I read again, Genesis 22 and verse 5. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here with the ass, and I and the lad, which is I and Isaac, will go yonder and worship. Abraham was not going to sing songs. He was going for a sacrifice. He was not going to sing songs. He was going for a sacrifice and was carrying the instruments of his sacrifice with him. So worship is not singing songs. What I mean by worship, learn to always deny yourself of that which you yeah. of that which you value most for God. Learn to take that which you value most for God, dish it out or dish it away in order for you to assess God. That's what worship is all about. That means it will cost you 
something for you to approach God. It will cost you something. Sometimes it has to be your comfort. You have to dish it out and go to your prayer altar. That is what worship is all about. This is the best time according to people that sleep used to be sweet. Let me use the African language. Sleep used to be sweet. But you have to push away the sleep. Force your eyes to open to appear on your prayer altar. That is worship. You have to deny yourself of some certain comforts to come to the altar. That is worship. You have to deny yourself of the same comfort to come to God's presence. That is worship. Sometimes you have to forego. You know, some things you love most, the pleasures you run after, you just have to dish them out and dish them away in order for you to be with God. That is what worship is all about. Abraham was the most valuable. Isaac was the most valuable thing for Abraham. But Abraham brought it all out, brought him all out for sacrifice just to obey God. So whatever you do and whatever it costs you to obey God, we call it worship. It's not just singing song. It's not just you singing. Singing song is different. Worship is, it, it will cost you. It will take away comfort from you. It will take away your pleasure. It will take away that which you love most from you. And you just have to all out, you dish them out and dish them away just for you to approach God. That is what we call worship. It's not singing. Because a lot of people today think, you know, when some people, you can't, if you worship in God, you will be lost in it because it will cost you so much. That is what worship is all about. So learn to worship God, not just praying alone. Pray without sin. Make sure there is no sin. Don't give yourself to any sinful attraction. That's what worship is all about, so that you can come to his altar. Sometimes you have to deny yourself of the worldly pleasures to come to God's altar. That is what worship is all about. Sometimes you have to deny yourself of some of your worldly friends. You have to deny yourself some of the worldly comfort and sinful pleasures all around you. You have to deny yourself. You know you can't be praying at the same time watching pornography. You can't worship God with pornography. You can't be living a sinful life, living act of immorality, living in fornication and you are coming to worship. See, that's not worship. That's why I say singing songs is different from worship because if you go to the congregation today, almost everybody you see there are just one, they are just interested in one thing or the other. That's not worship. Worship is when you come with all that it costs you to throw them away. You are ready to sacrifice them for God. That is what worship is all about. You are ready to sacrifice the pornography for God. You are ready to sacrifice the fornication, I mean, acts to, for God. You are ready to dish out all the worldly pleasures and the worldly sins, sinful habits and all of that just for you to stand in God's presence. That's what worship is about. It's not when you are singing, singing songs in the fornication, singing song in immorality, singing song with acts of pornography, singing song with all kinds of sinful desires. That's not worship. Worship has to be when you sacrifice all of those sinful desires, one of those worldly pleasures, all of those comforts that takes you to the world. You just have to dish all the way just to come before God. When you do that, you discover that your worship will be highly accepted. When you do that, that's why the Bible said, you remember in Romans chapter 12, it says, I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, that ye present yourself. That's what worship is all about. Present yourself a living sacrifice. That's worship. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your most reasonable service. That's worship. So whoever asks you what worship is, is, give me Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. That is worship. Then verse 2 says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed that by the renewal of the mind, so that you'll be able to prove that which is perfect, good. So that is what worship is all about. Worship is Romans 12, 1 to 2. Worship is the act that Abraham carried out in Genesis 22 and verse 5. It's not just singing song. There are a lot of people singing songs. Some of them are just just some we have different kinds of people singing so i don't want to mention that but that's not worship and listen to me even those people who are singing songs if you are really singing the real songs in god's presence you will be lost in it you will not have time to carry your uh, i mean your what if, your iphone to start snapping when real worship is or when the real song is going on because you will be swallowed up in god's presence you will not remember the materials 
because you are moving into the material world with God. So you not remember to carry your phone and you are videoing and snapping. No. So you must learn to ignite your altar. Learn to worship God. Learn to pray in tongues. Learn to give sacrifice every day. You see, the Bible says, and the priest shall always bring wood every morning and add to the fire. The wood is talking about is every morning you wake up, submit and donate all the woods you have on the altar. Let it burn. Let it burn. Your sinful desire, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the flesh, the pride of life, the loss of the world. Surrender their own woods. Put them in the fire. Make sure they are added to the fire and let the fire burn them up. Then at the end of the day, the real you is refined. The real you is purified. The real you is sanctified. And that is when you are praying. That's why you remember that is sacrifice. That is worship. When you come to the altar, you come out purified, come out refined. That's why I say present yourself a living sacrifice. He told them in Leviticus 6 that the priest every morning should add wood to the altar and let the fire on the altar burn. Make sure every wood in your life, always every morning, drop them on the altar. Let the fire burn them because at the end of the day, Every man's work shall go through the fire. Every wood will be consumed. Those desires, those passions that are not of God, those leadings that are not of God, those cravings that are not of God, every morning you wake up, drop them, so that throughout the day you are purified, sanctified, and refined for the master's use. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Your altar will continue to rekindle fire. Amen. Your altar will continue to catch fire. Amen. Your fire will not go out. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Altars that are risen up against your altar, God will destroy them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Evil altar will not survive your altar. Amen. Demonic altars will not stand your altar. Amen. They will not withstand your altar. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Your prayer life will not die. Amen. Your destiny will not die. Amen. Your destiny will not die. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. every demonic altar risen up against you shall scatter and cut. Amen. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. your prayer life will continue to go up and go higher every day. Amen. I declare that your prayer life is reignited by fire. Amen. It's reignited by fire. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We are going to be praying right now. You are going to decree right now that anything in your life that quenches the fire of God, I command fire I command to consume fire them right now. now. Whatever that quenches God's whatever fire in your life, whatever that is responsible for the fire of God, God not coming alive for the fire of God, not to set it in the name of Jesus. Anything that quenches God's fire, anything that is against the fire of God in my life, I set it up, please. Every desire, every worldly desire, every sinful desire, every loss for the world that quenches the fire of God in me, I set it up, please. Let it burn in the name of Jesus. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. Let the fire of God burn in my life. Let the fire of God burn in my life. Born in my destiny, in the name of Jesus, whatever that is not of God in my life, I set you ablaze. In the name of Jesus, let the fire of God burn. Oh Lord, set me on fire. Let every sinful desire, every sinful act, every loss for the world, every loss for sin in my life, I set it ablaze. I set it ablaze. Every craving for what we think, every desire for I set it ablaze in the name of Jesus. I set it ablaze. Let the fire of God burn in my spirit, in my soul, in my body. Let the fire of God burn in my spirit, in my soul, in my body. Let the fire of God burn in my spirit, in my soul, in my body. Oh, Baba, he let a banana and the barato to Baya and Zadana Gada Banana. Let the fire go burn in my life. Let the fire go burn in my life. Burn every craving for what it is. Burn every craving for my.
Abatira is God every craving, God every sinful desire, God pride in my life, God arrogance, God pride in the name of the loss of the flesh, the loss of the for the world, the loss of materialism. I set it ablaze. I burn you right now in the name of God in my life. Fire of God, consume sinful desire, consume every lust in my life, consume the fire of God, burn every lust, burn every passion for sin, every lust for the sin, burn them in the name of Jesus, and let Papa Tassia, let Papa Nadama, and let Papa Nadama, let Papa Nadama, but Sanya, Holy Ghost fire, burn, 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 my soul, but through my body, born now, born now, born now, every child, born child, born every child in my life, born now, born now. I set them a place, 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 I set them a place. Anything that would give room to evil Aaron, I set to a place. Anything that will not. If you are to my life, I set you ablaze. Burn by fire. Every loss. Burn of now. Every loss. Burn of now. Burn to ashes. Burn by fire. In the name of Jesus. Ah, Baba. I crucify the flesh on the cross of Calvary. I crucify the flesh on the cross of Calvary. Oh, yes. In this sister season, I crucify the flesh. I crucify the flesh. I crucify my flesh. In this season, I crucify my flesh. Oh, yes, Lord. I nail the flesh to the cross. I nail the flesh desires. I nail the flesh desires. Every fleshly desire. I nail you to the cross. I nail you to the cross. Every desire for the taste of the world. Desire for worldliness. Desire for sin. I nail you to the cross. I nail you to the cross. I crucify the cross. I crucify my body. I crucify my flesh. I crucify my sinful desire. I crucify my worldly desire. I crucify the lost. I command them be nailed to the cross in this Easter. Oh, Baba, this weekend of crucifixion, I command my fleshly desire to die on the cross. I crucify my body on the cross, my lust for the world, my worldly lust, my fleshly lust, every arrogance of pride. I crucify you to the cross of Calvary. I nail you to the cross of Calvary. Every craving for sin, every attraction for sin, I nail you to the cross. I nail you to the cross. Baba, crucify. I crucify. I crucify my body. I crucify my desire. I crucify my body. I crucify my desire. I crucify my passion. I crucify my passion. Ah, Lord. I nail my desire to the cross. I nail my desire to the cross. And then, Baba, Baba. Let the Baba. And let Baba. Go Baba. 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 Amen. Beloved, I want you to pray this prayer. The Bible says, The prince of this world cometh and findeth nothing in me. Yes, Sometimes, when an immortal is raised against an individual, yes, once there are no openings in your life, it can never prosper. Yes, the Bible says, When the edge is broken, the serpent will bite. But as long as the edge is never broken, the serpent can never yes, bite. The arrows has to go through an opening. There must be a door for the arrows. Yes, That's why we always ask the question, how did the arrow, how did it enter? Yes, how did it succeed? Yes, Where did it penetrate from? Yes, and that's why you see, this is Easter weekend. The Bible says, if every man wants to follow, he must first of all carry his cross. Yes, and when you carry your cross, it means that you are nailed to the cross now. Your desire for worldly things, 
your loss for the things of the world, your loss for all kinds of materialism. You see, the body of Christ to the pastor is not just praying now. We need to address the body of the church has become worldly and the world has become churches. Everything, 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 everything goes. And that's why the enemy is having a few days. You see, the enemy does not bring you down by persecution. He will definitely bring you down by compromise. So these days, the enemy is not really persecuting the church. He just decided to tactically force the church to compromise. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The enemy does not really want to persecute the church yes, anymore. Yes, he discovered that the easiest way for him is for the church to compromise. Yes, and what brings the fire life of a believer down is compromise. Yes, what brings the fire life of the believer down is compromise. Yes, In those days, the enemy attacked the apostles because they refused to compromise. He gave them persecution. Yes, but in our generation, because we are afraid of persecution, we accept a compromise. Oh, Jesus. We are afraid of persecution. So we accept a compromise. But in those days, they are, the disciples rejected compromise. So they faced persecution. But in our own time, we are afraid of persecution. We don't want the world to criticize us. Today I see some men of God, they say, they, they say some things, and because there are so many critics yes. on their comment section, they are forced to pull it down because they don't want criticism. Yes. They want the world to go after them. Yes. They want to gather followers. But the disciples of those days yes. didn't bother about what the world yes. says. They were rather after turning the world upside down. But this time we compromise. You are going to pray this morning. Make sure there is no room, no opening, no door, not even a window for the enemy. Pray that the sinful desire should go. God should. You are going to pray. This is Easter Saturday. Jesus over 3,000 years ago, was crucified on Friday, which is yesterday. Ask yourself to be crucified. Lord, I crucify my flesh. You can't be living in fornication, living in morality. You go to church and you are singing song. Who are you singing to? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's not worship. Yes, sir. Worship will cost you all. Yes, sir. Worship will cost you all. Yes, sir. Worship will demand for your best comfort. Yes, sir. Your best pleasure time, your best comfort time, your best comfort position. That thing that gives you the best of all comfort, worship will ask for it. Worship asks Abraham to submit and surrender Isaac. And he says, stay here. I am. In fact, there are people who should not go to the place of worship. Because Abraham told those young men to stay there. Because they were coming with nothing that caused them nothing. But Isaac, it was going to cost Isaac his whole life. And you're going to cost Abraham his only son. Yes, oh, Jesus. Yes, so when you are a worshiper, it shows that it has cost you all you have in the world. Yes, sir. That's worship. We're going to be praying this morning. Lord, help me to crucify the help flesh. Help me to crucify the flesh. The lost, the lost. For the things of the world. For the of lost the world. for worldliness. <sighs> Lost for what? Passion for sin. Passion for sin. Ah, desire for sin. Desire for sin. For life. These days, our role models have become worldly people. Yes, oh, Jesus. Has become worldly people. Role models. What the world does, the church want to copy. Yes. Compromise. You are going to go, Baba. Crucify this flesh. And I crucify myself and fresh. I crucify myself and fresh. This season, I crucify myself. I crucify my desire. I crucify my pleasure. I crucify all, Baba. On the cross, Baba, I crucify. I crucify. Paul say, I die daily. I die daily. I die daily. Lord, I crucify my desire. I crucify. I crucify my sinful. I crucify the flesh, Baba. Let Papa Badala open your mouth and pray prayer of consecration. Pray this prayer of consecration. Pray the prayer of sanctification. Crucify your desire. Crucify. Baba, renew my thoughts. 
Give me a renewed mind, Baba. Give me a renewed mind. Ele barado se tana na ba. Ele papa se tana na ba ba. Le prale ke tana na ba 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 ba. Ele prala te ba boche te. Ele katani na boche na ba. Ora katana ba 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 satali ba. Le papa ba da 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 biya kasha. Ele koko biya ba ba se te. Ele prale ke boche te na ba ba. Ele kada da da boche na ba. Ela ta biya ta se te. Ele papa pa ya la da ba ba se. I crucify myself on the cross of Calvary. I crucify. I cause every desire to die, Lord. Every desire for sin, passion for worldliness. I cause them to die. I crucify myself on the cross of Calvary. Oh God, crucify me afresh again. Crucify my body. Crucify my thought. Crucify my imagination. Crucify my desire. The unclean thing, sir. Touch not the unclean thing, sir. Come out from among them, sir. And be ye separate. See it, the Lord, yes, sir. He said, Do not be unequally yoked together yes, with unbelievers. Oh God. Compromise, yes, sir. 
compromise. You are going to pray. Whatever that is compromising my life, and whatever that is compromising my life, to worldliness. To worldliness. I set it up. I set it You are going to pray. These are serious prayers. Serious prayers. Because I believe that a lot of you woke up this morning think we are going to be gyrating and be vibrating against evil altars. But this is the most powerful prayer a believer can pray. Yes, prayer of consecration. Yes, prayer of rededication. Yes, and prayer of sanctification. Yes, it keeps you above evil altars. Yes, it keeps you untouchable. It keeps you too hot for the enemies to handle. Yes, sir. No matter the prayer you are praying, once there's an opening in your life, the arrow will gain access. The arrow will find access. You are going to pray. You are going to pray. Whatever that is compromising my life to worldliness. worldliness. Have you discovered these days the appetite believers have for worldly things? Even pastors, we on the altars, our appetite for worldly things, our desire, our cravings, our passion for worldly things. And these are the things that the enemy uses as a leg grant to climb into our life. To climb. Jesus said the prince of this world, talking about the prince, that means the, the, the devil. He said the prince of this world, come to me and find it nothing. Yes, sir. And find it nothing. What is that thing that compromises your life? That the enemy uses as a ladder into your life? What is that thing as a believer? Today you see Christians boring nuns to hang rings. Christians. All manner of compromise. You are going to pray. Whatever that is compromising whatever my life, that is compromising to worldliness, to, worldliness, to sinful, desire, sinful desire, I say to a I say to a go to a go to a open your mouth and go to a go to a whatever that is compromising my life to worldliness, whatever that is causing me to compromise to sinful life, whatever that is leaving me to lost and passion for worldliness. I set you ablaze. 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 Your life in Amen. 
the passion to go for God will reignite it in your life in the Amen. Name. Amen. We release the spirit of a worshiper into your Amen. life. We release the spirit of a worshiper into Amen. your life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. From today, your words will become fire. Amen. Your words will carry power. Amen. Your words will become fire. Amen. Your words will carry power. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Become too hot for the enemy to handle. Amen. Become too hot for evil altars to handle. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every satanic make compromise that has been forced or projected on your life today we command them to cut by in the name of Jesus Amen. you will stand out for God Amen. you will stand out for God Amen. you will burn for God Amen. you will burn for God Amen. you will stand out for God Amen. you will burn for God Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. the enemy shall never have any claim in your life Amen. the devil will never have any claim in your life Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. the hand of the Lord will rest upon Amen. you in the name of Jesus. Amen. From today, you will never stop burning for God. Amen. From today, you will never stop burning for your God. Amen. Your altar will never, never go out of fire. Amen. Your altar of prayer will never go out of fire. Amen. Your altar of prayer will never go out of fire. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. the Lord will bless you and your family. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. God bless you. God bless your family. Crown you with good things. Crown you with testimony. Grace covers you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. On Monday, we begin another fire section on this prayer altar. Don't forget, make sure you get others to join us. Send links to them and let them join us by Monday. The Lord bless you. Amen. Your altar will never go out of fire. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you are covered Amen. by the precious superior blood of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name.